Hello, welcome back to my retro tap. Uh, that is actually episode ten this time. I'm sorry about the uh, sorry about the confusion there. I don't really know how to introduce this video. Um, a neighbour and friend of mine got in touch <clears throat> to say that one of his relatives was having a sort out. Would I like an old stereo? And I said, yes, I'd be more than happy to have a look at it. And uh, if it's not something I can use, I give it a good home. Seems a shame that stuff like that goes to the tip. So any opportunity I get to actually save something from going to the tip, I'm going to take it. And then if it finds a new home, it finds a new home. If it's something I can use here or have the space for here, then then yeah, I, I'll give it a home, obviously. Um, and in amongst that was this. Lovely old knitting box, dance it legs, and it's felt wants a bit of a hoover, but it's, it's just dusty, um, not grimy or anything. And this house, when I got there, it was like stepping back in time. And I know that is one of the most overwrought phrases ever, but it was literally like you opened the door and there wasn't a single thing about the decor or the fitment of that building post. 63 64 house was built in 58 all original wallpaper some of the wallpaper like around the handrail of the stairs for example was worn through in in some places because it was just old it wasn't badly looked after it was just old and uh i fell head over heels in love with that house and would give anything to be able to move into a place like that or better yet make my place look like that that would be very cool. If I was in a position to do that, I rent, sadly. No, not sadly. I've got the most wonderful landlady. Um, but obviously, I would also very much like to be able to be my be the captain of my own ship as far as uh, decor and stuff. <clears throat> that said, this knitting box was already full to the point the door, the lid wouldn't shut. Uh, and we were sort of going through bits and just chucking them in there. But I haven't actually looked through this and and examined stuff. So um, I wanted you to come along for the ride. I feel like this is quite literally like unboxing a life. Um, this was obviously someone's just pop it in the box. Box. We've all got one. We've all got a drawer like that or a uh, what's that, those Danish butter biscuits boxes are the, are the best ones. The tins. Um, yeah. And this is this was somebody's that, and I just feel like it'd just be amazing to do a bit of archaeology. Won't be showing any personal details, um, and I'm not one to take the mick out of out of people. Um, I know a lot of people are like, "Oh, look at the old thing," but we don't do that on this channel, obviously, as you know. Everything on its own merits. I'm just very excited. It's going to be cool. Um, so let me get set up. And let's see what's uh, what's in here. I'm already three minutes in, which is terrible. I was I swore I was going to cut videos down, but quite frankly, folks, this is just going to have to be a long one. You, you can see this thing is full to bursting, and it's going to be treasure. House is still presently lived in, so there may be some newer stuff, obviously, in in here than the sixties. But the decor just hadn't changed. So let's go for it. Oh, that's special. Oh, the old hinges are a bit corroded and a little bit loose. Might That might need a bit of a service. Gently. Where do you start, you know? I'm not going to zoom in. I'd love to, but I think it's probably a better idea to just take stuff out. I'm going to make myself a bit of room. Give me a minute. Immediately knocks the tripod over. Of course. But... I can't move in here at the moment. I've got too much stuff. Sorry. Anyway, we're nearly there. Oh, right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> wow. Oh, I can't wait. I don't know about you. I can't wait. I've just had an email from somebody saying that they can't wait, apparently, as well. Let's go for it. So, first, top of the pile. This wasn't in here. Uh, the top sort of thin layer is going to be stuff that we popped in there just to keep it safe on the on the journey round card caddy set there's something very special about this i say special cool 
obviously comes in a beautiful case. Uh, made in Hong Kong, so it's old. Uh, don't know how old. I also don't know that there's no brand on it. This would have probably been one of those things you buy in a, like a souvenir shop or a travel shop or a boots or somewhere like that. Um, but it's never been used. What a sin. What an absolute sin. So I'm not going to open these. In, this is an overview. Uh, we'll do each thing individually of note. Um, that's going to be getting used. That poor thing has sat there all that time waiting for its moment. And it just so happens that my kids like playing blackjack. So there we go. Sorted. Very sweet little uh, Easter Easter bunny card. Very cool. There's like a pouch or something. Would have probably had chocolate in there or something like that, maybe. Don't know. Very cool. <clears throat> I cannot put into words how amazing these smell. That's right. Christmas decorations. Flame retardant tissue Christmas decorations at that. Got to be from the 70s looking at that colour scheme. Absolutely beautiful. And they still spring shut. No maker's mark on there. Well, there's Cascade, but I'm oh, sorry, a uh, retailer mark on there. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Here's its mate. 45p from Woolworth. Not even Woolworths. These, this one is a Winfield. Winfield paper decorations. Just awesome. Look at that. A lot of happy memories and stuff. It's been used as well. That's what I love. This has actually... I don't want to use the word seen action, but it's seen Christmases, man. Like, people getting together at Christmas and having a lovely time seeing each other. I just couldn't see it go to the tip. It's the smaller guy. Again, probably going to put this with a load of other old school decorations I've got and do a... There we go! A Christmas special. Wouldn't that be awesome? And this guy, he's very much the same. I mean, it's ready for its... Ready for its moment in the sun. We can't not open it, but yeah. <laughs> A spring and summer Argos catalogue from 1984. Simple modern discount shopping. We've got to have a quick browse, haven't we? Oh, Qualcast. That's some serious kit right there. Do you know, I don't think I've ever seen a broken one of them. Black and Decker, back when everything was blue. I remember that. It's making me feel old. Jeez. See, I don't think you can buy half this stuff from Argos anymore. Is that a lathe? Oh my god, that's a Wolfcraft wood turning lathe kit. I've got the earlier version of this uh, from the 50s in storage somewhere. I'll have to dig it out. Um, and it was wolf, not wolf craft. But geez, you know that's not that's not cheap. Nine pound fifty in nineteen eighty four. Our price five ninety nine. Get yourself kitted out with uh, with Stanley there. Huh? <laughs> right, ready? Are you ready? Where is it? The one time I haven't knocked it off a shelf today, and I can't find it. Are you joking? Oh, I will be back, my friends. Bear with me one moment. Right, sorry. The reason I just lost my mind at that is I've got one of them. <laughs> RF-18. Butane fitted with a self-sealing safety valve that doesn't so much seal as it goes and makes you feel like it's just sucked back a load of flammable gas with an ignition source that is about to go bang on you, but actually does the job really nicely. Um, I'm in the process of giving up smoking at the moment, so I don't have a, uh, I don't have a lighter to hand, but yeah, oh, that's just so cool. Sorry, I wasn't expecting to see that. Oh, excellent. Oh, you're probably all going deaf right now. I've got a couple of Yankee screwdrivers as well. It's, this is of a time when Yankee screwdrivers were still for sale. 
All purpose shop. Now that looks like a useful bit of kit. Bottom left there. I could look at old tools in mag in catalogues. Just everything was so much better built back then. Oh wowza. Chain alarm. And that's that's some tat I wouldn't mind looking at. Oh, so cool. The old never ready plugs. Amazing. Roof racks. I'm interested to know if they do them for if they're car specific. Doesn't seem to say. Anyway, we're not we're not spending the whole video looking through an Argos catalogue because we're going to spend another whole video looking through an Argos catalogue. But look at the watches. I'm not really a watch guy, but there is just something about that period. So great looking, fantastic. Oh, that's cool. This is in amazing condition. Seconda. Oh yes. Remember these freebies. Just walk into a car boot sale and take those away. Please, God, take them away from me. I, I just I can't handle having this little clock anymore. Look at that Starburst clock. And I've just dropped a load of guarantee cards out of it. And order slips. Those are rare. Kind of wish I hadn't dropped them on the floor now. Right, quick flash to them. I'm putting it away because I could be here all day. In case you can't tell, this channel is something of a passion project. And... Uh, I do it because I love it, which also means I get terribly, terribly sidetracked. I'm supposed to be looking through the rest of it. So let's do that. Ford. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's a brochure for a 1979 Ford Thunderbird. What's that doing in there? There's no way that Ford Thunderbird would have fitted down that street. Whoa. Okay. Oh, this is awesome. Look at that interior. Sadly, it has been folded for many, many years, so I might have to put something heavy on it and just let it mellow out in here where it's a little bit humid. That tends to at least coerce them to try to be flat. Well, I don't know about you, but so far this is pretty much lifetime finder. Some balsa wood. It feels like balsa wood. It's ever so soft. Okay. There's some balsa wood there. Uh, that might actually be part of this. I don't know. It's hard to... No, it's too... It's not the right shape and size. Anyway, there's some balsa wood. Very cool. <laughs> uh, what we here? What's this? Elm Farm Dairies. Is this the right side? Yep, that's, that's what they wanted us to see first. Oh, it's from the Milkman. This is from 1978, everybody. Uh, again, last year, hundreds and hundreds of our customers purchased the perfect Christmas hamper and have promised to reorder again during 1979. Oh, so it may be, it may be 1979. I'll get very excited. Can't help it. <gasps> oh, I'm in heaven. Look at the old packaging. Wow. We are definitely going to have to do an old advertising, an old literature video on this channel because... I love that stuff. Oh, Ashen's fans out there will appreciate the uh, canned whole chicken. The less said about that one, the better. What? Wally hat. Repaired because people used to look after their stuff. Why buy a new one? There's nothing wrong with my old one. I'm going to just fix this one. Cool. I hope the guy wasn't looking around for that for too long on a cold day because it was in your uh, it was in your box, mate. Um, in a dry throat. I'm getting a bit too excited here. It's the thing with stuff like this. People used to just fling stuff in there to get it out of their pockets or out of the way. Sick of looking at that thing on the side. I'll put it in a box, I'll sort it out later, and they never do. So it's it could literally just be anything from any period of time. Old co-op bag for the uh, 
for the retail archaeologists among you. What's in here? Rubber foot, I presume, off of a uh, off of a shower seat or one of those adjustable shower rails. Useful enough to not throw away. Not useful enough to be needed yet. This is the thing. All this kind of stuff is is all awesome. Uh, letters, there is going to need to be a vetting procedure for that. I need to see if there's anything personal on them. Um, I know this chap, and he's a relative of my neighbour, who's also a friend, and I don't want to... You know what I mean. If I'd found this in Southampton, some hundred miles away from where I live, and then come back here and it was dated 1802 and it was about some personal stuff a bit different but this in recent memory i can see one here that's from xmas 1980 i don't know if it's an actual typewriter written letter or if it's a circular or what but i'm not gonna i'll have to pause before i look at those because i'm gonna filter out any personal information as best i can obviously i can't help if something's just suddenly popped up so it slips out of the way or whatever what the hell is that Okay. Child named M. Rest of the name obscured for a minute. Made made this hat. No, it's not a hat. What the hell is that? What on earth is that? What I do know is it's made out of some beautiful 1970s vinyl. It's, it's like the stuff, uh, you know, you go to a motorhome, like a, you have a caravan holiday, the coating they cut on all the walls. It's not wallpaper, but it's not plastic. It's somewhere in the middle. Very flexible, but yeah, I can, uh, but thicker and stronger than like melamine and stuff like that. I don't know. Anyway, look at the pattern. Very cool. That looks like it might be related to the Easter stuff. What do we think? Collecting Easter things? I don't know. It's nearly Easter. Maybe I'll get my daughter to take it for a spin. Um, okay. Last thing, and then I've got to just pause a quick minute, take the letters out, and then we'll go through the rest. If there's history to be adding the letters without identifying anybody or without any personal information on it, then of course I'll be more than happy to look and show you guys, but I've explained it. I don't need to look through any more letters. Coates Ladder Mendings. Wow. There you go. Fix your tights. Not uh, not my thing personally, but that's because I don't wear tights. Right. Bear with me a hot minute. Okay, I'm in a state of disbelief at this. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to have to give you a small amount of background information on myself. Oh, my God. Before any of what I'm about to say makes sense. Um, I grew up in this village my whole life. Uh, and I love it to pieces. It's a beautiful little village just outside of Oxford. Just outside of Oxford called uh, Baronsfield. Um, and <laughs> in looking through this stuff, because I didn't want to identify anybody, because I grew up here. I know a lot of the people that may have sent letters back and forth or <clears throat> written stuff down, community circulars. This person's been up to that. This person had some illness, I don't know, and I don't want to put that sort of information on the internet. But this is like a mixture of a vintage literature showroom and a historical, I don't even know, monument to the village I grew up in. This village was built on an old American air base that was used during World War II for P-38 Lightnings and Spitfires, despite the fact everybody says the Americans didn't use Spitfires, they did from here. You can find that out very easily nowadays, but back then it was considered to be rubbish. Anyway, uh, when they left, a load of people moved into the ancillary buildings to the airfield, and a, and a village was established, and it was they, they broke ground here in the, uh, in the 50s. So, it's precious little wonder I'm as crazy about 50 stuff as I am growing up in a village that solely there are no old buildings here. It was the first village to be built on virgin land for 200 years. So it's my my world is this stuff. 
And I've just found some awesome old local village voice type things, including one called the Berensfield Independent, which I had no idea was a thing. Anyway, let's dig in. I've got all the personal information out of the way. It's nothing major. It's uh, They had a whip round for a bingo at Christmas, and there was a list of names and addresses on there, obviously. Uh, and there was another, there was an airmail envelope with a list of names and addresses on it, presumably another bingo whip round. <clears throat> uh, directions to a place, I may, maybe we'll go and look and buy a car or something out near Banbury. Nothing nothing major, but still information I don't want to put out on the internet, because it's not to me, it's not my information. So, let's dig in. You've probably already seen what I just saw, but... Look, I want to find the. I want to find that. Where's that in the house? Is that still there? Please, can we can we find that in the house, please? I think we're going to have to just do a binge. I'm going to start a playlist. I think just for literature, where I just do silent or maybe royalty free gentle music in the background, and just show these pages long enough for people to look at them slash. Uh, Pause to look at. Vauxhall Chevette, son! Oh my goodness, that's an amazing looking car. Oh, my dad's going to lose his mind when I show him that. So my dad had a, a Mark II Cavalier. It was the same shape as the... It wasn't that one. It was the model after. I can't remember. I'm sure it was Mark II. It was definitely barking up that sort of tree. Um, <laughs> Carlton Estate. That's a rare beast now. They're all rare. Royale. Do you know what? The quality of this paper is unbelievable. It's like it's covered in vinyl. It's amazing, actually. Really impressed. It's no wonder it's better. The pictures are just... I am going to have to do a literary branch of this channel, aren't I? Or maybe a new channel that just does the literature stuff. Right, yeah. So, let's get stuck into the Berensfield Village news. This sort of stuff was my landscape. In fact, that wasn't because that burnt down. <laughs> that burnt down before I was old enough to remember it. But it is a mid-century masterpiece, this village. Um... I know these houses. If you come back up the road this way, you go to the chip shop and what's called the top shops. And then the church is here on the green, if that makes sense. Uh, there's an obituary to a Jane Jarrett there. Um, oh dear. Anyway, um... Yeah, all sorts of stuff. Berries, berries, fancy goods, DIY. Wow, there was a DIY shop. Which whereabouts was that then? That must have been down at the bottom, perhaps. I don't know. My parents will know. What year was this? Oh, this was 83. This was before my folks moved here, believe it or not. Jobs in Berensfield, working at the family centre and crash. Need a craft project. Employment agency stuff in here. Look at the edit they made here. They needed to change the date. Just stamped it. Proper, proper old school circular village newspaper. You don't, there just isn't stuff like this anymore because it gets thrown away. It was free. A lot of people didn't want it in the first place. So they binned it. Back in the day. And then other people go, oh, I'll just get that old tat out here. It's just mind-blowing to me. Um, right, so the airfield was called Mount Farm. And apparently the filling station over the road was was known as Mount Farm Filling Station. It was a BP. An apology to all Berensfield residents who did not receive a copy of our September newsletter. All of us who were involved in the production of the newsletter are very sorry for this oversight. Well, that's all right, guys. I think I'll let it slide on this occasion, but damn it, be more careful next time, yeah? Advert for a Rumbelows service department. Amazing. Careful. I'm getting excited, sorry. 
so thanks and yeah just all, all uh, don't forget saturday night bingo that's a words we can all live by oh <laughs> immediately drops it electrolux's bonus cover on this breathtaking i want one of those vacuum cleaners that is so cool it's ridiculous oh Another amazing quality. Most people didn't even open these in the day because they just wanted the Hoover. Oh, the Electrolux vacuum cleaning device. It was a Hoover. It's hoovering out a what looks to be a British Leyland vehicle there. Remember those ridiculously weedy indicator stalks? I bet you it still ran and drove nicely. Ran and drove nicely. Oh, there's a back cover to a Ladybird book here. We need to see if I can work it out because I've got a load of Ladybird books and it's going to be mind-blowing to me if this fits one of them. Uh, I know it's tattered, but it would be nice to reunite them even if they are in bits. Okay, what else have we got? Good grief, there's so much in here. Skoda dealer in Dorchester, which is the next village over. Old Skoda. Not new Skoda. Bypass. Yeah, because that's the old layout of the original road, I think. No, 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 no. Not as apparent. Sorry, I was, I'm was. i doing the old local, local flavour bit. Um, this bypass didn't used to be here. That there was the main road. And it was tiny. Because <laughs> there was nothing here. And then all of a sudden there was something here. But we wish to announce that we will not be closing when the new bypass opens. There you go. So it is at the time when there wasn't a bypass there. Workshops open five and a half days. They're going to continue with all servicing and the usual. Krypton tuning. Wow. Oh, this is insane. This is going to be like a four hour video at this rate. and I don't care. Anybody who's not interested is going to tune out either way, right? So the rest of us who are interested might as well have some fun, even if that's just me. I'm a 32-year-old man. I'm used to partying by myself. <laughs> the Dairy Book of Home Management. So this will be from the Milkman, yep. I literally just I ascertained if there was personal information on it, and I chucked it in the box if not, so that I didn't don't want to lose the spontaneity, obviously. God, they used to sell everything. Home maintenance stuff. Jesus. That's fantastic. Oh, cool. I have to find one of them to go with this. It's always nice to have the advert and the product. There's a few bits of blank paper in here, which seems wrong to get rid of them. Ah. Aha. I'm putting two and two together, quite literally. Where's that Vauxhall brochure? I thought it wasn't making sense to me. Whereabouts is it? Sorry, I'm faffing, I know, but... There we go. There's the problem. Ah, oh, reunited at last. Look at that. That's... That was the trick. Cars of quality and distinction by Vauxhall. You definitely cannot say that about Vauxhall nowadays. Dross. Absolute dross. Spalding Bulb Company. I wonder what bulb you'd send back in there. It must be for, a, I don't know, guarantee bulb? A guarantee card? Not a guarantee bulb. A guarantee on a light shade? I don't know. Light fitting? This was the one that blew my socks off. Please focus, camera. This is not the time. April of 1979, Berensfield Independent. International Year of the Child. I must take this to my neighbour because I'm pretty sure he's been one of the folks who, uh, oh. Oh, oh my God, it's individual bits of paper stapled at the side. I thought it had a spine. Oh, what was I going to say? Sorry. One of my neighbours was on the, has been on the village voice committee for like, I don't want to say centuries, that's disrespectful, but for years and years, like back way before pretty much anybody currently alive on the village, I think. 
There's very few of those guys left, but this village is such a lovely place. Most of the people who lived here when it was first built stayed, and they're only going because they're passing away. And again, that's why it's important to keep hold of this stuff. Oh my god, conversion of the street lighting timing switches has now started. I can't open this out, I'm afraid, guys. I don't want to break it. Conversions to street lights. I presume that's when they brought the photo sensor lenses in to turn on when it got dark rather than running an old school analog timer that was powered all the time. Consideration of a safety surface for the children's play area was put back for further information and advice from suppliers. Formal application has now been made for the ground of the village burial ground. Would you believe that cemetery was not built until I was probably nine or ten? I know this means nothing to most of you, but I just don't care. This is huge for me. An application from Warwick Pumps Limited for exit and access gate was referred back with the advice that separate gates were preferred and that a single gate so directly opposite the primary school entrance could not be considered. I could take you to that building, show you that building and those gates. And I remember when it was Warwick Pumps. Uh, <laughs> there's been a problem clearing a ditch along the side of the fane drive up to the tower building. Uh, oh, people must have been flinging stuff in ditches. Yeah, they were bad for that around here when I was little. And this was back in 1979, so it's nice to know that some things didn't change. Elections on May the 3rd for SODC, South Oxfordshire District Council. That last word's lost all meaning now. Um, parish Council elections. Another Easter one. Ken Crisp. Ken Crisp worked at the youth club when I was a kid. And this is... A note from Ken Crisp from 1979. So, Ken, if by some miracle you manage to find this video, I have got a copy of a community chest that you wrote in April of 79. So, uh, awesome. Keep up the good work, Ken. As far as I know, he's still going. Yeah, very cool. Right. Anyway, another old school paper for you. Genuinely fascinated by that uh there's some 280 grit wet and dry waiting for its moment but like i say it hasn't been used yet and i'm not going to throw it away because it hasn't been used yet and that's really wasteful so um there we are anyway what's this this looked like a circular or some weird bit of advertising. road market i'd never heard of road market before what's that what no, so this is from 1981. Oh my god, is that a portable supermarket? That's amazing. Jesus. Sorry, I'm getting very squeaky. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the local villages around here. Amazing. I have to look into that. I didn't know that was a thing. So I take it it was just a monster great articulated lorry trailer with a supermarket in it, and it was cheap. Because they didn't have to pay rent on... Rent and rates on buildings, I suppose. Um, these look like a couple of the old religious circular jobbies where you get accosted by a chap. Oh, these are this one's football scores, actually. Uh, so if anybody wants to know the results of the uh, Upper Thames Valley Sunday Football League, uh, Devony Cup final uh, from 1982, fill your boots. All these folks played on... Those teams or something. I don't know anything about football. I am probably the least into football it's possible to get without being rude about it. I just, it does nothing for me. I'm not trying to make a point, not doing that attention seeking thing. Oh, I'm not into football, but I'm just, it does nothing for me. What's this? Councillor Michael Hugh Jones, report number 29. From Christmas of 1980. Um, oh, God. Okay. Yeah, that's all getting very... Um, new 1980 Housing Act has come into force. Oh, that's too much detail in there to quickly show you without standing in front of the camera for ages. An old church uh, leaflet like you'd get on a church service. What's this for? Oh, it's Christmas 1981. Eight years before I was born. 
I bet this poor thing didn't hurt it end up in my grubby mitts. Awesome. Not religious in the slightest, but there's just something about these old Christmas brochures. I went to a a uh, county primary school doing the hymns in assembly every morning. I'm not religious in the least, but they did used to know how to make Christmas really exciting. <laughs> so whenever I see stuff like that, I yeah. It gets quite cool. Um, another road market. April of 82. 68p a pound for country herb sausages. Jesus. There's all the stops again. I need to know. I had no idea this was a thing. Has anybody else heard of road market? Let me know. I had no idea. Right. My goodness. We're still not even halfway through. I'm going to have to do a two-parter because you guys are going to be sick of the sight of me. See you in a few. Thank you very much for watching episode 10 of my retro tat. I'll see you less than a minute's time on episode 11, but 36 minutes is long, even by my standards of rambling.